Right, welcome everybody. It is so good to connect with you. For those of you who've never met me, I'm Deborah Wayne. I'm the founder of the International Chronic Pain Institute. Many of the names on the, on the list here today in the Zoom room, I do recognize, so it's good to see you. And there are a lot of you who I have no clue who you are, and I am honored and thrilled that you're here. And I don't know where you came from or how you got here, but I will tell you there's no accidents in the entire universe. There's nothing random. Every, I wish I had a nickel for every time someone told me this random thought or this random thing happened. There's nothing random here. No accident that you have ended up in my universe. So welcome. You are welcome here. And today I hope to say something uh, or that you have an experience that you can't explain and that shakes up everything you think you know about your health, your life, and the way life works. And I know that if you're here, there's probably something going on, most likely physical pain of some type or some kind of mystery condition that has caused you to seek. And probably many of you, if not most of you, have been seeking and seeking and seeking for a long, long time. And I'm glad you're finally here because you can end your search, literally. I'll be talking tonight about the unique way that I've discovered and developed over many years of after my own personal health hell and then working with literally tens of thousands of people now in over 160 countries. I never would have dreamed I would have been doing this. I never would have dreamed that any of this is, is or was possible. But I am here to tell you that although if you're new to my work, if you're new to me and to what you're gonna to hear tonight, you might roll your eyes. You might think, oh, she's just selling something. Or you might think this is just too good to be true. And I get it and you're, you're welcome to bring every drop of your skepticism here. You really are. I'm not here to convince you, um, but I am here to shake you up and share with you that there really is a solution. It's very different than most likely what you've heard so far. Uh, my work is outside the conventional box. It, it doesn't fit in that box and it won't until the conventional box changes, which it may or may never do. And I'm not really concerned with all that. I'm here to help as many people as I can while I'm alive on planet Earth. And I know there are a lot of people suffering. I know you're probably suffering. Many of you are here with different types of pain. And so I wanna get one thing really clear tonight. When I say the word pain, I don't just mean physical pain. You may be here because you have panic attacks or you can't sleep at night and you haven't slept in years. You may be here because you feel anxious a lot or worried or stressed out or you uh, feel depressed. Maybe you've been told you have anxiety disorder or depression. Um, I'm here to share with you that those aren't things that you get. Those are patterns that you develop as a result of three things, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment. So pay close attention, please put everything aside and you may wanna grab paper and pen. And I encourage you to write down, even if it's just the key words that I say, where you feel something or where you have a reaction, maybe your body, maybe you get chills, maybe you feel a sensation in your body, maybe you start to get pissed off, <laughs> maybe you feel scared, maybe you start to laugh, maybe you start to cry, maybe you start to shake. You have some kind of reaction that you weren't expecting. Write down what I'm talking about and you can go back into the replay tomorrow when you get the replay and listen again. And I bet you that after tonight's call, your mind is going to be expanded and you're going to hear things when you listen to the replay that you don't even hear tonight because you're not ready to hear it tonight, but by tomorrow you will be. Because consciousness changes rapidly. It doesn't have to take years and decades to change and to heal and to feel relief. The work that I do never asks you 
to take any pills, any potions, any lotions. It doesn't require physical therapy or giving up all the foods you love. That's one of the main things or several of the main things that sets it apart from everything else that's out there. If you have physical pain, especially the first thing that they tell you is you should give up, you know, start giving up certain foods, eliminating that from your diet, see how you feel without those foods, right? And they often will look at medical tests and recommend either prescription drugs or natural supplements. Now, again, whether you have physical pain or not, they do this same thing often with emotional pain, like depression, anxiety, panic attacks. They want to calm you down with a pill. I lived like that for 14 years. It almost killed me, literally. So I know that route a little too well. I personally, this is over a third, uh, about 35 years ago now, maybe longer. Um, I had been suffering for quite a long time with ulcers, digestive drama, couldn't eat a thing without a stomach ache. My hair was falling out. I had in terrible insomnia. I could not sleep without either getting drunk or taking some kind of pill. I um, had aches and pains in a lot of places that would come and go and none of them made any sense and nothing showed up on a medical test. And my thyroid showed up on a medical test and they gave me, I tried both conventional and natural methods for treatment, nothing worked. Oh, well, I had a long list of, of stuff, but the main thing was that I had a head full of anxiety and I felt depressed. And if I wasn't feeling depressed, I felt anxious. And if I wasn't feeling anxious, I was back with depression. And it just was, it had gone on way too long. And it was affecting not just my physical health, it affected my marriage, my career, my finances, my hobbies and interests. My world got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because I was exhausted. Oh, I forgot to mention the chronic fatigue. Yeah, exhausted all the time. I never slept well at night. And so I was tired all day and I drink pots of espresso and then have to take pills to sleep. I mean, it was, a, it was not a good way of living. And I ate really healthy and had for years. I didn't eat junk food and even eating healthy did not make a difference. So it was very mysterious and the doctors were just kind of, you know, I, we don't, I don't really know what to tell you. Like, take this pill, it'll calm you down. Well, those calm you down pills, I became highly addicted. And they said they were non-addicting, but they were highly addicting. And they eventually they didn't do anything. They didn't work at all. So I was taking buckets of supplements and these prescription drugs every day, all day long, I was taking a pill or drinking something and nothing was working. And I woke up one morning, talk about a small shrinking life. I woke up in my walk-in closet and I couldn't get off the floor. And I was so depressed that I was having suicidal thoughts. And I couldn't, I just couldn't get back on the horse one more day and I couldn't fake it anymore. And I was out of ideas and more importantly, I was out of the willpower to try to go find another doctor or figure it out. I was just exhausted, beyond exhausted. And I was very afraid, but I didn't know that I was afraid. I wasn't in touch with fear or anger, which were the two emotions driving everything, but I, I really was out of touch with it. So I screamed out at this at a God I did not believe in on that day. And I had a really powerful spiritual experience. And I was graced with an inner knowing that everything was going to be okay, that I was, was going to heal, that I actually had, I, I was shown a new understanding over the next number of months about energy and how everything is energy and this life force energy is flowing through us or not well it's always flowing through us but we can we cannot experience it we can do things that mask it that 
create what I call fog. And you know, I live at the ocean and there are some days where the ocean's like right there, but you can't see it. It's as if the ocean doesn't exist because the fog is so thick and you can't see two feet in front of you. That's the kind of fog I'm talking about. And I, I have get every day appointments with people who, who tell me they have brain fog. Well, you don't have brain fog, you have fog. And these are blind spots that are keeping you from seeing the ocean that's right there. And it's not your fault. And I'm not here to blame you or anyone, not including the medical uh, community. They wanna help you. They've only been trained to help you in a certain way. And I grew up in a medical family. They love helping people, but they were trained that there's a pill for every reason and every season. And that's what they used. They didn't know other ways. Well, I was graced with the other way. And over the years put together a system, I call it my pain-free living program. And it's why I wrote my book, which by the way, before I forget, if you haven't read my book, I highly recommend you all read this. You can get a free copy on my website and it's a, it'll download to any device. If you want the kind of copy you can underline, go to Amazon. And it's called, Why Do I Still Hurt? I wrote this book for those of you who are like me, who just kept trying and trying to figure it out and figure it out and figure it out. And you couldn't figure it out. And no professional could figure it out. And you think you've tried everything, but you haven't until now you've tried everything or, or it feels like you've tried everything, but you have not tried everything, I promise you. There's more to be revealed that's been hidden from your view. And so if you have physical pain, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, maybe you have trauma from your past, from an accident or an injury. Maybe you have trauma from uh, your childhood experiences. Many people come to me, they have birth trauma, literally trauma during the birth process. Maybe you have trauma from some type of abuse sexual abuse, violence, physical abuse, any type of abuse, religious abuse, anything. Um, these, the body is an amazing, amazing thing. And we hold cellular memory that literally re is responding to our life experiences. And until you learn how to find it and release the painful life experiences, your body holds the imprints. And this is the biggest problem and it won't show up on a medical test. And what contributes to all of the pain and the patterns and the symptoms, which by the way, that's also the good news is that your pain, your patterns and your symptoms, they're all made of energy. That's the good news because energy never dies and it can change form. And in fact, it's changing form constantly, whether you know it or not. And it can change instantly. It doesn't have to take time or long periods of time like it does talking about things. Energy changes and can change instantly. Some of you tonight, just from hearing me talk to you are going to change. You're going to feel physical changes, experience mental and emotional changes. And you, you'll, you'll kind of wonder, I wonder if it had anything to do with that call or with Deborah. Well, the answer is yes, <laughs> but you may not have a way today to measure that. You're just going to notice the change. And that's fine with me. You don't have to give me the credit. But I am here to facilitate that change. Everything is energy. Your physical body is not physical. What did she say? <laughs> Your physical body is not physical. It shows up as physical in this 3D reality. But the fact is, if you were to look at your body under a very high powered piece of equipment, you would see that it's a vibrating mass of particles of light and energy. You know how when you blow up an image on your computer screen and you see that it's made of those little teeny circles of colored, we call them pixels, little circles of dots of color. 
your body looks very much the same. It's not a solid object. It is a malleable, changeable, beautiful, amazing, misunderstood field of energy, light, and information. This field is something that is measurable with the right equipment. You typically will never find it in a medical office yet, unless you have a very incredibly advanced medical practitioners. And there are some, but it's very rare. These devices come from Russia and Japan and they measure subtle energy. So you find them in physicist's office, subtle energy research labs, places like that, which is not where you're going when your back hurts or when you can't sleep at night or when your stomach hurts. You don't go to a physicist, you go to a medical professional. And this is where the disconnect begins. And you start to receive information that you believe and that may or may not frighten you, which by the way, changes your vibration the fastest when you're frightened. And you start down a spiral, downward spiral into a pattern that then your body feels, senses, knows, understands at a vibrational level and it imprints. There is a field around your body. It's really, I, I hate to say that because it's not really around your body. It's an extension of your body. This field surrounds every living thing. And we think we end at the skin, but we don't. This, the body is a vibrational field that's slow enough that it appears dense in physical form and you can touch it. It's dense and slow. But the further out that you go from the body, the more subtle the vibration and the different, the vibration changes and it becomes so subtle. You, most people can't see it and touch it and don't know it's there, but it is there. You know how magnets, they have a force field around them. You can't see it, but it's very real. You have a force field around you too. And it's very powerful. And in fact, I will go so far as to say, this is the most important thing I'm gonna to say tonight. The field is the precursor to the physical realm. The invisible field is the precursor. It comes before anything that shows up physically, including your body. Now, the invisible realm, although unfortunately it's been labeled woo-woo by a lot of people or spiritual, is as real, if not more and more important than the physical realm, the physical world. But that's not what you've been taught in most cases. And this is the unfortunate reason that you've, many of you been searching for so long and not found the answers you need. It's why I cried and wept and searched and tried to figure out and figure out and spent literally, you know, tens of thousands of hours and dollars trying to find what was wrong with me over a long period of time. And it was only when I began to really understand the world of energy that I got it. And in, my life has never been the same since. I became aware that this life force energy flowing through me was going to be used to heal myself and other people, that I had a higher purpose here. And as humbling and scary at the time that that was, and it took me a long time to step into that purpose because I grew up in a medical family. <laughs> show me the data. My dad would say, show me the data. I'll read the book, show me the data. And I'm like, I have no data. I'm not gonna even tell you because this, you'll just think this is too weird. So I had, I had a lot of work to do to clear out my understanding of all of this and to test it for a long time before I was willing to go public. And at some point I turned that corner and I've never looked back. And in fact, at the time I turned the corner, I had already 
stacked on a bunch of degrees in psychology. I became a hypnotherapist, a hypnoanesthesiologist. Um, I had a, a certification in chemical dependency counseling. I was a Reiki master. I was a yoga instructor. I was um, just a bunch of stuff, a bunch of certificates that I, you know, stacked on. But I stopped practicing. Oh, and there were so many other methods that I just studied, took workshops and studied, you know, with sound and crystals and oh, all kinds of things, oils, you name it. I mean, like I was fascinated by all of these healing methods, but the day this came in for me, I've never looked back and I've never practiced any of those methods ever again, literally, because the results that I started seeing working in the biofield were just unbelievably obvious to me and dramatic in ways I had never seen before. This biofield is that field I've been talking about, and that's not something that I, I, I didn't give it that name. The National Institute of Health, which I'm sure some of you have heard of, literally gave it the name biofield. They studied it and they said, this is real. We don't know. We don't, we're not going to endorse it or, you know, um, we don't have a lot of studies and things or money we're going to put into it, but they put enough money into it to find it, name it and say, yes, validate it. This is real. And every living thing, plants, animals, everything living has this biofield and your body is no different. So the field is like a recording device and it's been imprinting, recording everything that's ever happened to you. And it records your thoughts, your emotions energetically, vibrationally. The information in your field is vibrational information. It's not letters and objects. It's and think of it more like Morse code. Uh, and it has sound, which some people are able to hear, hear. Certain instruments are able to pick it up. And it has color and light, which some people are able to see. And it has texture even. I'm able to feel that as well. When I scan a person's energy field, I can often see the colors and I hear tones and sounds and sometimes certain music and I can feel the vibrational information in your field, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's in person, whether it's at a distance and whether it's a group of unlimited size. And I know that again, see, this is so new to people. For me, it's like I've been you know, aware of all this for so long now, it's just second nature. But I know for a lot of people, it's new to think about it this way. It's not really new though. There is a whole new body of science, this biofield science. They call it new science, but it's ancient. It's what the ancient yogis were talking about when they talked about the subtle bodies, the layers beyond the physical. It's what many cultures have talked about. Many, many cultures. It's not just the yogis, and it's not just now with the quantum physics that's talking about it, but it is both ancient and new. And it's based on principles from quantum physics. And it will all make logical sense to you if you do, if you are, want to geek out on the science, you really will find a lot out there. One of my favorites was Dr. Valerie Hunt. She was the first person to ever photograph the biofield. And she uh, developed equipment where she hooked up oscilloscopes which measure and, and make graphs on computers of um, vibrational frequencies, waves. And she hooked up computers and camera film and oscilloscopes and don't ask me, I mean, she had a brilliant mind and was able to figure this out, but she was able to photograph the field around the body. And she could clearly see that all health and all disease, let me repeat that, please. All health and all disease begins in the biofield. And the biofield is communicating with the cells of your body. It's talking to you. There's a conversation going on between the biofield and your body. And 
it works in both directions. So if something's already manifested physically in your body, and I work with people, then the equipment that measures can show the change in the biofield and in the body. But if nothing, but the but the the biofield can start to show us things that haven't shown up yet in your body because there is a time lag, and we can find things sometimes many, many years before it would show up in the physical. Now, I don't know about you, but who doesn't want that? Like to find it in the field first and release it before it shows up as a physical symptom, as physical pain or disease. Like, don't you want that? I sure do. So the field is the newest and the oldest. <laughs> um, most incredible way to look at your health. And it's the fastest way and the safest way to speed up the healing process. And it requires no pills, no potions, no supplement. I don't even recommend supplements. It's not about changing your foods, but here's what I'll say about all that. If it would be for your highest and best good to supplement your, you know, your body, your physical health with something or to change the way you're eating, you're going to discover that. And so some people, when I work on them, not some, a lot of people, when I work on them <laughs> right away, they'll, they'll email me and say, wow, it's so weird, Deborah, but all of a sudden I felt like I wanted to make green juice. I've never wanted green juice in my whole life. In fact, I was just like, get that nasty stuff away from me. But all of a sudden they have a desire for it. It was not willpower. It did not take discipline. They had a genuine inner desire for it. And, and I don't always mean everyone will want green juice. Some people say, wow, um, I just started eating a completely different way that so much feels so good now. And foods aren't bothering me anymore. And I'm gravitating towards healthier foods. And I actually didn't want the cookies and the ice cream. But see, it happened naturally after we worked in the energy field. Some people stop binge eating for the first time in decades. Some people stop starving themselves. The, I guarantee you that any dis-ease is not natural. That's what I want to impress upon you, that disease is not our natural state. It comes from the pain of life and not resolving it. It comes from not being able to digest life and the experiences we've had, whether they were traumatic or not. And you know, trauma is different for each person. You may have had someone say something to you in the third grade that got imprinted as a very traumatic experience for you that you don't even realize was that big of a deal. But for you, it was. I remember I had a music teacher um, in elementary school and up until that music teacher, I loved to sing, I loved to play the flute and other instruments. And she had said something to me one day out loud in front of everyone in that class. And I do remember it. I don't remember exactly what she said, but I remember the feeling that I had. And it was this deep sense of shame and embarrassment. And I shut down after that from singing and from, I, I dropped out of the choir, everything. And it's, things like that that I'm talking about, which you may have not thought about in decades or you thought were no big deal. And, or you didn't even put two and two together and realize that an incident caused you to think a certain way and feel a certain way and then make a certain choice that led to a life experience and changed your life. And you didn't, you would have gone down a different path. So the environment we're in is critical to our health. That doesn't mean that um, when I say your physical environment, I do mean that. I mean, you can't live in a polluted, toxic waste dump and expect to not notice anything affecting you unless you're a true master, in which case you would probably not be living there. But, um, you know, if you're surrounded with mold and bacteria and all this, it's going to affect you most likely, maybe highly, but that's not 
where you stop. If you are taking in and consuming information from the internet, from social media, from family, friends, coworkers, that's very negative, that's very mean or unkind or judgmental, if it's directed at you, it's going to be hard to deal with day in and day out. It's going to have an effect on you. Yes, it is a pollutant. And unless you are mentally and emotionally strong, and if you take that in day in and day out, you will most likely develop some kind of defense against it, unless you're really good at knowing how to release it. Most people aren't taught how to release things. They're just taught how to either fight it, try to stop it, run away from it, or they freeze up and don't know what to do. And they just kind of blank out and go numb. And I've worked with people who literally went physically numb. They had no feeling in their hands and feet, or I had some clients in their whole body because these emotions froze. And so in the email, I, I told you I was going to reveal the top three things you, you must do if you're going to live pain free. And that means even if you're here because you have relationship pain or uh, financial pain or career pain, or you don't know what your purpose is and that causes you pain, it's not just physical or depression, anxiety, emotional pain. Pain of any type, there are three things you have to do in order to heal from this and get back to your natural state, which is not pain and disease. You have to find and release the damaging thoughts. Those thoughts are a force as real as electricity. And we know from science that the average person thinks 90,000 thoughts a day. That is a lot of thinking and most people are recycling and repeating similar thoughts over and over and over and over again. Many of these thoughts were your parents' thoughts or the people you live with or lived with. They are thoughts you got from someone else. They're not even your own unique original thoughts. And we aren't taught in school to examine our thoughts and to get rid of a lot of them that aren't serving us which I found most of them needed to go bye-bye. I needed a, a real brainwashing. The second area is the area of emotions. And this is probably the most profound and least, least known factor that's contributing to all pain, suffering, and symptoms. And that most practitioners have zero training to deal with. So they can't help you there. In fact, they may even tell you, just calm down, take this pill, don't get emotional. Um, because they think that's helpful. Anybody ever hear that? Like, just calm down. You're, you're getting too emotional. Anybody ever hear that? Well, guess what? You're not getting too emotional. You're having a flood because emotions are energy and they need to release. And you've been trying to shove it down and shove it down and look strong and brave when they tell you, we've got this, be a badass. We're gonna overpower this. We're gonna fight this. We're gonna win this war on whatever. It's, a, it's not my approach to go that route. I'm not gonna say good, bad, right, wrong for some people if that works. Look, if it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. But I found that that approach actually adds energy to the very thing you're trying to get rid of. It's like having a fireplace and you wanna put it out for the night, but you add another log. Why would you add another log to the fire you're trying to put out? That's what you do when you deny, suppress, repress, fight, try to stop what's there. We have a common, well, before I go on, so area number two is the emotional energy that has to be released and acknowledged and not judged as being bad and weak and silly and stupid. It is not. 
it's the most powerful life force there is. All of life on planet Earth is experienced emotionally. In fact, everything you do is based on an emotion. Every choice you make, you made from an emotional choice. You may have used logic to back it up, but you chose everything based on emotion, how it makes you feel. Everyone wants to feel alive. And we do certain things and make certain choices because we think it's gonna make us feel more alive, expanded, happier, more joyful, better in some way, expanded, increased, improved in some way. Or we wouldn't do it. Even, well, I won't go there for now. Okay, let me go back. So the third area that we need to if you really want to more in the most rapid way heal is to work in the energy field because that's where vibration changes vibration think of it like an instrument a guitar a piano that goes out of tune you bring in the piano tuner and he tunes it up he doesn't bring you a new piano he doesn't say well we're going to rip out the keys we're going to destroy all the strings we're going to tune it up and get it back in the notes that it's supposed to be in so it sounds yummy, harmonious, resonant. Well, your instrument is an instrument that needs tuning up and can get out of tune very easily, but can get back in tune also rather easily sometimes instantly. And this idea that healing has to take a long time and be hard, and it's, it's gonna be hard and it's gonna be layers. And there's a lot of common myths floating around that can get people very discouraged. And yes, some people do go at a slower pace because that's what's best for them. And some people, everything changes overnight because that's what's best for them. And I don't determine that. So the other big key factor that I really want you to hear tonight is that your body is literally telling the story of your life. And if you don't deal with your life and what's happened to you and your reaction to it, you most likely will be one of those that says to me, I've tried everything and nothing's worked. Because you can't just take, for example, um, let's say you have a, a cut and it's open, it hasn't healed yet. Something happened and you cut, you got a, a big cut and you never clean it out. You just patch it over or, or even worse, you just leave it open. So the dirt and the grime and everything, and it doesn't heal. And then you say, well, why? Because it needs to be cleaned out and it needs to be treated kindly. And it needs to allow the time for it to heal, which the body knows how to do. And will do it naturally if it's given the right environment. Well, the right environment is not to stick an open wound in some kind of bacteria ridden muck and get it all infected. It's, it needs the right environment and it needs to feel cleaned and safe. We all are the same. And so if you don't feel safe, chances are you're not gonna share your true feelings. You're not gonna share your thoughts, not gonna share your ideas. You're not gonna be excited to just be who you really are, think how you think you're not gonna be you. You're gonna to try to look around and figure out, well, what do they want me to say? And how do they want me to be? And how am I supposed to feel? What should I look like, sound like, be like? And you will get further and further away from your authentic self the longer you do that. And that, that road leads to pain, suffering, and symptoms every time. 
real physical pain, suffering, and symptoms. And just like everything in nature, you have a blueprint that you came into this life with to follow it, but, but we were also given free will and an intellect which can override and say no to the natural blueprint that we're designed to follow. Or if something happens to us at a young age that overrides that blueprint, then we may not trust the blueprint, we may not follow it, we may have been told that our blueprint was bad, wrong, ugly, not enough. And so we disown ourselves from the blueprint and we don't follow it and we try to be who we think we should be or where we confuse the love and approval and we don't express who we really are. And when there's a suppression instead of full expression, there's going to be disease. Think of a, a, a fishbowl or any body of water when there's no circulation and the water doesn't get cleaned, it grows algae, mold, bacteria, and, and nothing can live in that, in that environment. The fish will die. It's not because the fish are unhealthy. It's the water in which the fish live. Our environment is seriously important. So that means physically where you live, the air you breathe, the people you're around, the information you take in, what you say to yourself all day, in those 90,000 thoughts, you're living here. You're living in here, that's your fishbowl. And the emotional climate, the emotions you're around that you're receiving from other people, the emotions you feel, all of this contributes to your fishbowl and whether you feel ease or dis-ease. And then another very, very important misunderstanding is that People have grown to believe in disease. The people of our planet have grown to believe in disease. And that's why you see everybody fighting it and creating a war on it because they feel they have to overpower it with a force greater than the disease. Well, what if you'd forgotten that the body is designed to heal itself when it's given the safe, right environment and the right tools that it needs. And instead of seeing the world and life is against you, you realize that these symptoms are in your face because they're trying to show you you're off track. You're not following the blueprint and that there's a message in your pain for you and if you get the right kind of help with someone that can help you decipher what's coming up, what, how that relates to your life experiences that you have not fully resolved and released, and you get to know who you really are and you start to get the support you need so you can express who you are and insert, that may not come from your family, I'm sorry to say, but your own family may not give you the support that you need to be who you're meant to be. And they may not be doing that to be mean to you. They may be doing it because they think that's what's best for you. But I'm here to tell you, other people don't know what's best for you. You know what's best for you and your answers are inside of you. And so if you're not around a, a method or a mentor that can draw out of you what you have inside you that you know is best for you and they just try to tell you who to be and control you and tell you how you should be and how you should think and what you should do with your life, and there are plenty of people who will tell you that, but you will find yourself more than likely in a heap of hurt. So when you enter my universe, it's a journey back to home, to home base, the deep core home inside of you that you are hardwired with in your DNA. You have this wired, and you can never be separate from that. You might feel separate from it. You might have had a long, circuitous, painful journey, but you're never separate from that blueprint. And the work isn't because the work to do is not to get something you need. Everyone says, what do I do? What do I get? What should I do to heal? No, again, no wrong way of thinking. 
we need to get rid of what we've taken on in our mind, our emotions, our bodies, our energy field that is not serving us. It's polluting us. We need to get rid of the pollution, clean it up and release the damaging thoughts, the damaging emotions, the imprints from life that cloud over the real you that create the fog bank that keeps you from enjoying the ocean. So it's like we're in at a resort and not enjoying it. And we're living through a very challenging time right now because the whole planet is going through a dis-ease as well. So you're also affected by the planetary trauma. So I don't want this to all sound like doom and gloom because it's all changeable. That's the good news. But until you're aware and you know, call a spade a spade and own it, you can't change it if you don't own it. And most people are looking outside themselves to fix themselves, but that's not where you look. It won't work in the long run. So um, there's some, let me check the chat comments here really quickly. All right, so Catherine is saying, my pain, arthritis, fibromyalgia, dental, really amps up during sunstorm activity. Is there any way to lessen it? Well, I'm sure there are. I would have to know a lot more and you know, um, understand what you're reacting to, but this is what's fascinating. The sun is streaming in information all the time. We've been taught to fear the sun, but we can't live without that sun. That sun is literally bringing in information that we need. And many people never go out into the sunlight. They're not, not in nature. They are afraid of it. They're, and I'm not here to give medical advice. So I'm not telling you to not wear sunscreen. I am just stating the fact that they're trying to block the sun by slathering sunscreen all over and um, putting sunglasses on and blocking the sunlight. And the sunlight carries information that all of nature thrives on. And we are part of nature and yet, unlike any other animal or plant, we uh, are afraid of nature. And so many people never go out in it and they, they've learned, underlying learned, to be terrified of sunlight. So um, there are the ways that I teach people in my pain-free living program have to do with developing a greater awareness of what your body's telling you in every given moment and learning how to take a deeper look at your thoughts and your emotions and the feedback that your body's giving you. Your body's giving you feedback. So something that amps up during a sunstorm activity, what I would just off the top of my head, and again, I'm generalizing, I don't know you well enough to say this, but, um, and this may only apply to you or not you, or it's not an, an, and I don't want to generalize, but the sun is a very powerful force on our planet. And you may be sensitive to the information it's bringing in, which is a good thing, but you may be more sensitive than the average person, in which case your body's giving you feedback about something and you're interpreting it. Um, you may be afraid of it. And if you're afraid of it, you will get a bad feeling from it or you may have the fear itself. Fear is a very strong vibration and it will lower, it will affect our nervous system and it will cause a reaction like really rapidly. Fear is like, you know, fear can make a person have all the symptoms of disease within minutes. So, and it's the first thing to tank your immune system. So you, I don't know, I'd, I'd need to have a deeper conversation. You know, if you, um, for those of you who've never worked with me, I do offer an introductory discovery session, which is a deep dive into questions like this, where I can look at your unique situation in your life and your symptoms and what the feedback your body's giving you and help you decipher what's going on and then recommend what I think would help you. And so this may be, this is a good example of 
where I would want to have a deeper conversation to help you get rid of the blind spots there. Um, all right, let's see. Lori is saying, um, oh, I'm so, thank you. I'm so glad to hear this. Lori's saying she just had recently a private session with me. And she said around the third day, I felt 75 to 80% better from her pain. So in, I went into a science lab a few times where they have equipment that measures a person's pain and energy, and including emotional energy. And they showed in the science lab that oh, there's changes that occur over a three-day period. And that with my high-speed energy healing method, that there is improvement after the first session for many people, even if they don't even if they only do one session, that there's a three-day window and a lot of people start to feel better and better and better um, within that three-day window. More healing can occur after the session than even during it. It's pretty fascinating. They said they've never seen that in 25 years of research. So that explains also why you, and they said that the, um, it showed, this, the, the experiment showed um, a 51% decrease in all pain symptoms, including emotional pain after the very first session. And on the second day, a 67% decrease. And I didn't do another session. I didn't even show up on the second day. The person just went back in to be measured. So improvement occurred without me and without another session on day two. Now, what's interesting is that the client, the volunteer for that experiment, well, I've done several, but they all said the same thing. In the very first session, they said, oh, no, I'm 99.9% .9 pain-free. So the, the machines, even the sophisticated equipment from Russia, it wasn't even measuring fully because they were saying, no, I feel 99% pain-free, but it showed only a measurable result of up to 67%. And I think that's because we just haven't figured out yet how to measure what's going on in the energy field well enough. I think this, it has to do with things moving faster than the speed of light and other, other principles from physics that um, aren't, aren't measurable yet. Um, oh, interesting. <laughs> Zaina said, this is hilarious. I just noticed a doodle of the sun that I drew in my notebook a while ago. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Stacy said, I had my first session yesterday and I feel so much more peaceful today. Yay, I'm so glad I haven't heard back from you yet. So really glad to hear that. That's awesome. Um, how do we not buy into fear? Very good question. So fear is based on your thinking. Your thoughts generate, every thought generates an emotional reaction. And your emotions will generate more thoughts. So if your thought was a fear-based thought and it generates an emotional feeling that you'll call fear or anxiety or panic or worry or overwhelm or stress or whatever you call it, that will generate more thoughts about the feeling which go back to more thoughts and more feelings and you end up in this loop that's like a revolving door that you can't get out of and get into the building. So you have, to, you have to change the thoughts. You can do it two ways. You know, I teach people several different ways to go about it, but, the, but no matter what, you end up having to change your thoughts and your emotions, both. You end up changing the thoughts and releasing the emotions. And so um, that's what you have to learn to do. And that's what I teach. So for those of you that want to go deeper with me, I'm going to, in a, I should have told you this earlier, I'm going to give you, um, make a very special offer today for those of you that do want to go deeper. I will share that with you in a moment. Um, but that's where I'll, I'll teach you several techniques for getting out of fear. And it's not that you get out of it, you learn to not be afraid of it and you learn what it is telling you and you learn from it and you release it. That's the key. See, it's not about protecting yourself from life. And, oh, I love people say to me, I just don't want to make that mistake again. There really are no mistakes. You're learning something you need to learn. 
Your life experiences are trying to teach you something you literally came here to learn on earth school. And we're all in earth school. We're all learning. Nobody escapes that. But if you try to escape it, overpower it, numb it out, avoid it, deny it, suppress it, drug it out, you'll avoid the learning and you'll just keep learning the same thing. Even though the bodies change or the cities change or the jobs change, the, there it is again, that jerk or that abuser or you know that pain, it shows up again because we haven't gleaned the message and made the change in us that we need to make. Oh, Carrie, I miss your voice too. <laughs> it's good to have you here. Now I just realized that the Carrie that flashed the little baby on the screen was you. I saw that and it didn't register. I'm so delighted to meet the beautiful Ella. Is it Ella, right? Yeah, so beautiful, amazing. So I'm gonna brag on Carrie for a minute because Carrie was one of my early, early Pain-Free Living Program graduates. And Carrie, God bless her. Carrie probably in the beginning couldn't talk without crying. <laughs> and she had so much fear. She didn't drive. She didn't, you know, she just was like living in a bubble. And today I am proud and excited to tell you that Carrie grew so much. I mean, just, it was mind boggling how much Carrie grew. And she got a puppy, which she had wanted forever and was too scared. And she got this cute, adorable puppy. She and her husband grew and she now has a baby. She is so not afraid that she, she got, had a baby. And um, I believe, I, I forget how old right now, but it's like, your baby is just gorgeous. And thank you for the beautiful photo you sent me. And I'm just touched and thrilled that you got, you, you just were, you know, so open and willing to do the work and you, you genuinely benefited as a result. Let's see if I can find her on here. Where is Carrie? Carrie, could you, oh, there you are. You want to say anything about the before and after Carrie effect? <laughs> I didn't know that you were going to, um, I, was well, I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, yet. you're totally, you know, I would brag, brag about you anytime. I just was saying hello. Um, no, I want you yeah. to brag about yourself and flash that cute little baby again. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? I, uh, she's sleeping now. Okay. Um, she's five and a half months, but, um, Amazing. yeah, I'm really, I actually was just putting her to bed and I was telling her about you and I just, um, yeah, it's just amazing because it was probably my biggest fear and my biggest desire when I started working with you Yeah, and it took time and work and oh my gosh, I still have so much work and time and things to do, um, yeah, we do. We all do. but, um, but yeah, it just, and you know what, it was just the right timing, but I do, um, like on a daily basis, I haven't spoken to you or, or done any of your programs in probably over a year or more, but yeah. I think about the, the skills that I've learned in your program all the time. And I talk with my, my friend, Carrie and Meg and Teresa that I met in the program I yeah. <laughs> um, all the time and trying to remember the tools because they're so great. Um, but I've just been recently feeling like I, I miss connection with you. And so, um, Carrie and I here. are joined for today for, to listen in. So glad you're here today. And, um, yeah, you know, I can only imagine that lucky daughter of yours, cause she's going to grow up with a different mindset than you and I grew up with. Mm, and it's I hope so. be amazing yeah. to watch her grow. So. Uh, I'm just glad. and I do drive but locally yeah. but the fact <laughs> so that you I'm still, drive, I'm still growing I mean, that's a big deal it is yeah. and you you know that that was something you weren't doing at all and so it's a big deal all right thank you Carrie it's always good to connect I love you and I'm just thrilled for you and your husband no, thank you thank you thank you thank you 
All right, let's see. Um, would you relate thoughts to beliefs? Yes, beliefs are made of thoughts. Um, they're, you know, beliefs are strong thoughts. And usually beliefs are handed down from generation to generation. Um, but what's also interesting is that when a large group of people accept a certain idea as true, then everybody typically thinks it's true. And that's not the case. Would you guys mute your phones for me, please? I need everybody to mute. There we go. When a large group of people accepts, oh, that's true, when they believe in something, it's, it makes it seem like it's true and more and more people will agree, even if it's not. And you need to be very, very aware of that because oftentimes you'll get swayed into doing something, thinking something, taking something that isn't for your best, highest and best good. And you'll get a feeling about that. You, won't, you may not have people around you to validate your intuition and your inner knowing and your gut reaction. And yet that may be true for you and important for you to follow. And that's where it, you know, learning new tools and having support around you that helps, not tells you what to do, but helps you discover what's best for you coming from inside of you. That's where that is so important until you can do that on your own. So, um, very good question. And, well, yeah, Zane is saying maybe it's fear of death, which our society tries to avoid and ignore. There's a huge fear of death. There's a great misunderstanding about death as well, because it, again, it's not just one idea. You have to look at the whole ball of string. We could be here for a month talking about this, but the fact is there's a misunderstanding about energy and that life is energy and your body and your life is energy that never dies. So there's a huge misunderstanding about death. There is no death. Yes, the body changes form, but you will be alive somewhere in some form into eternity. Energy never dies. And so we're fearing something and making a huge, oh my God, all the choices that are made to try to, because of the fear of death, um, are detrimental to much of health. So let's see. All right. So before we end the call tonight, I just, there are a couple of things. Let's recap. First of all, pain is your friend, not your enemy. The body gives you feedback. Don't fear the feedback. Everything is energy, including your pain, your patterns, and your symptoms. Don't fear that. Learn from it. And if you, if you don't understand or don't know what to do about it, get the help you need. If it's not from me, that's okay. I won't be offended, but get it from somewhere. Because what most people get stuck in is trying to figure it out and figure it out with the same ideas that have them stuck in the revolving door. They've got the same ideas that create the same emotional reaction, and then they think they're going to fix themselves and figure it out. It doesn't typically work that way. You have to have a higher perspective, a new perspective. You have to have a new understanding. You have to have new tools. If you think the same thoughts and feel the same feelings, nothing will change. And if you want something to change, something has to change. But if you don't know what to change, and if you're scared of change, which most people are, especially if you've tried things and it hasn't quote unquote worked, what I find in myself and other people is that people become more and more afraid of change and trying new things because they're expecting a result. They don't get the result. And then they say, well, I'm just not going to try anything. And they shrink their lives. They shrink their relationships. So there's nothing left. That's not what life is meant to be about. Guarantee you that. Um, oh, there's another question. Up. It's a good one, Chelsea. Since energy doesn't die, do you often see pain from previous 
forms and previous lives? Well, the answer is yes. You are your soul is the literal um, conglomeration of everything your soul has experienced in many lives through throughout a continuum. And you, some of you have probably been around a long, long time, and some of you are probably newbies here. Um, and those of you around a long, long time may be having a more painful experience than the newbies. So, you know, again, I don't want to get into that discussion tonight. It's a whole nother, it's a course in and of itself. But the fact is, yes, you are, you created, there's a template that you come in with and it carries, your field is carrying all the information from everything your soul's ever experienced and the imprints from this life and what you brought in from your lineage. So a lot of people come in with, um, in, in my own case, I'm certain of it now, I didn't know this for decades, but see in the womb, you're picking up the emotional energy from your mother and you don't, recognize that you're separate from your mother and so you're picking up literally whatever she's experiencing think about that fishbowl you're literally in a fishbowl a liquid bowl and everything that's going in there is being affected by the mother so and the mother's being affected by the fishbowl she's in and so all of this is imprinting and you come in with it so i woke up feeling anxious for many, many, many years. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And it was only decades after I had moved away from home, I had um, started working on myself in an unconventional way and working on myself in a way partially like I'm sharing with you tonight and examining emotions and feelings and thoughts and energy. And I realized my mother was anxious from, especially during her pregnancy with me and all through the birth process and all of the years that followed. And to this day, I mean, she still has panic attacks that got labeled as asthma. And it wasn't until I started doing this work that I saw my mother got misdiagnosed. No one's ever helped her with her anxiety. And I was carrying those emotions for a long, long time. So that's just one example of so many that we're all impacted by. And remember emotions, the stronger they are, and anxiety is a strong one, um, the quicker and the greater the, the quicker the impact and the greater the symptom can be, the greater the feedback and the feeling that you'll have. I hope that makes sense. So, okay, so thoughts generate emotions. Emotions are the precursor to the choices that you make. Your choices that you repeat, 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 create a habit and habits create patterns. And everything pretty much, unless you examine all of this, your life is a pattern. Your body's a pattern, your relationships are patterned. It's, they're just patterns that are all changeable, but you feel stuck in them or a victim of them because they're unexamined and no one's shown you how to pull it all apart and discard what isn't helping you and keep what is. It's not hard, it's not difficult. It just, no one shows us how. This should be taught in kindergarten. So, um, Read my book, please. And for those of you who would like to work with me, there's several ways I work with people. I still do take one-on-one -on -one, um, for that introductory deep discovery session. And that's where I will just help you and you alone go deeper into figuring out what's going on and make recommendations to what would move you forward. It's not always with me. Um, I also, have the pain-free living program and that's offered three ways it's offered as a digital home study e-course that you can download to any device and do it at your own pace alone without any support we've tested it people get results 
I think getting live support is better because you're going to have questions at some point, but the people that have gone through the e-course have definitely gotten results. So the e-course is available and tonight I'm going to offer it to you at half off. The second option is the e-course um, plus the live group together. The live group is a six week program where you show up every week in a live Zoom call like this with other amazing people. Carrie's still friends years later with the people from her group. Some of the people stay in the group as an alumni. So some of them stay for, Carrie was in the group for like two years. You can stay when you finish. We don't throw anybody out and abandon you. And it's not that, you know, some people stay just because they love the people, the tools, they love um, the healing sessions every week, and they love to be able to ask for my help. So every single week you get a live high-speed healing session and you get the e-course and you get the other people. And we have a private soon to not be Facebook group, soon to be somewhere else group that everybody can connect to each other every day if they wish. Some people are in there every day. So there's, a, there's like I said, the e-course, and then there's the live group and the e-course together. And when you sign up for the live group, you get the e-course entirely free. So it's a way to twist your arm because I know that the live support does have great greater benefits for most people. But do what feels right for you. I'm gonna give you a special link. I'll type it into the chat right now. Hang on. If you go to internationalcpi.com forward slash PFLP hyphen special, it will take in, you know what? I put it all in capital letters. I don't think it matters, but typically it should be lowercase letters. I think, I don't think it matters. Um, if you go to that page, you will, receive half off of the pain-free living program e-course and the other if you sign up for the live group you'll get the e-course entirely free the if you have any questions about it all the information's there i'm not going to go into explaining all the details of the program you can read that there if you have any questions email us contact at internationalcpi.com. It's in the chat. Just email us and um, my team and I will get back to you. We will answer your questions. We'll help you make the decision if you're not sure which program is right for you. The other, if you want that discovery session, that one-on-one -on -one session, it's internationalcpi.com forward slash discovery. And you can sign up there for the one-on-one -on -one discovery talking session which is that deep dive into what the heck is my body or life trying to tell me. But you can also add on the high speed energy healing session, a private session to the discovery session and do that all together, which I do highly recommend. And that's a power punch right there. So if you're gonna do one thing and one thing only, I would, well, I don't know, you have to decide. There, I would, I think the pain-free living program, the live group really will give you, those are my advanced tools. It's the most advanced and the deepest work that you'll do with me. And those tools will serve you the rest of your life, no matter what challenge comes up, whether it's physical, mental, emotional. So I do recommend the pain-free living program as the number one thing, if you're only going to do anything, but you may not be ready for that. You may want to see, well, let's see what she finds, or let's see what comes up in our discussion, what, you know? And so a lot of people like that private session. I don't blame them and it's life-changing for people. So if I can help you further, please let me help you. And if you're only looking for like more calls like this with information, although I do do, I do add um, meditations and tips and certain techniques um, I have a membership called the High Speed Healing Universe, and it's we meet on Wednesdays at five, and it is um, a low investment. So if you're not sure, and you just kind of want to get your feet wet and see if all of this stuff starts to make more sense, check out the the High Speed Healing Universe. HSHU. It's internationalcpi.com forward slash HSHU. 
And it's a very economical way to receive a healing session once a month that I do for the whole group. It's not private, it's for the whole group. So that's also a very good way to get started if you're not sure if this is all for you yet. So not to confuse you, but there's really quite a few options to sort of please everybody. <laughs> and hopefully one of those options will work for you. And like I said, if you're not sure, just reach out and we're happy to help you decide. I hope you have, I hope I've made you think tonight in a different way. And I hope that Tanya will keep her phone muted. <laughs> um, I hope that it maybe got you uncomfortable and shook you up a bit. You're welcome, Zaina. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you all for being here. I, I really sincerely, you know, my life changed as a result of my health hell. And that day in my closet, it changed. I was not on this career path. Never in a million years would I've been on this path. But I was rocked to the core from what I learned. And over time, it developed into this body of work that I never even expected. And I never expected to be able to help people to the degree that I have been. And it is truly a humbling honor. And it it gets me up in the morning and out of bed because I get excited about it. And I love seeing people get results. And I wish I could just wave the wand over everybody and boom, you know, it's not always like that. I don't want to give you the wrong impression, but I want to say that there's nothing weird or wrong or defective about you. It's not your karma. It's not your, you're cursed. You can heal. It, we may have to dig a little to find it. You may have to do some work. You may have to be teachable and willing and cha to change and think differently and act differently, but you can heal. And if I can help you, it would be a true honor to do that. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for taking time out of your precious life to be with me tonight. I hope you'll come back. I hope you'll come to one of the programs. And I'm so glad Adam is saying, I feel such relief already. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that, Adam. This, see, I, I, I too like results. You are my results. <laughs> so thank you for getting results. Keep trucking. Do not stop whatever you do. Do not stop. And I'll see you somewhere again, hopefully sooner than later. All right, everyone, stay well, be happy, healthy, much love. And the replay will go out tomorrow so you can listen again and share it with anyone that you think would benefit. Please spread the, spread the love. Bye, everyone. <laughs>